My name is Mikhail Stevens. This is a video response for Kud Hus. Uh, I still love that name, even if I can't pronounce it. Uh, this is for uh, his roguelike. This is for episode 5 for the Dungeon Master. Uh, we're going to talk about that shortly. Uh, I want to showcase some of the... I can see all the crazy UI. Uh, I want to showcase some of the changes that I've made. Um, I know it's kind of in 3D, but it uses a lot of the code. Um, and I think it's really awesome, uh, some of the message systems that I've uh, implemented. Uh, you can talk to someone, for instance, uh, this is a canvas over their head that comes up and goes. This is kind of akin to your uh, dialogue systems, but it's uh, it's sort of a kind of another take on it. This, another game had a um, really cool dialogue system. Uh, you can also open up the chess, um, and then you can uh, chop. Uh, this is kind of cool, too, where I added you can add the ability to chop the tree by just hitting the, um, the B button there. Uh, it's just because of TGB is the uh, reason. Uh, and then uh, I've added in <laughs> a ton of mobs and uh, you know, and cute, cool mobs. Uh, and then also uh, I've kind of cleaned up, I don't know, I put a little bit of work into the um, the debug system here that you created, which is really awesome. So you'll see your melee attack strength and we have, don't have a range attacks. We have one armor and 10 HP. Um, this kind of UI down here with the McCaven and the cells were kind of from an old project. Uh, it's, uh, it's the other thing too, it's like, um, I know this is kind of taking what you're doing and sort of going, you know, running a f so far ahead, but it, I've been working on this for about three years and I kind of do this full time. This is kind of a test project for, um, I'm kind of trying to make a game. Um, so you can kind of see this. Um, anyway, so there's, you know, news tracker item was kind of a, an idea. Um, this is actually kind of cool too where um, so I have this achievement system in and uh, I've always had trouble with it I know you can actually now go up to the editor on the 2017 but I don't have access to the 2017 plus so I'm on 565 566 here anyways you can reset achievements um, and then you can walk up and uh, let's see if I can find uh, I think oh yeah so now I, I'm getting achievements um, and you can actually uh, do combat as well. Um, so it's kind of uh, it's what you were working on, but uh, yeah, okay. Uh, anyway, so the second step, uh, I guess this is kind of long enough. It's just uh, a really awesome project. I've kind of taken a lot of things. Um, I guess I really didn't think about this, but like one of the things for the um, like the tree traversal, uh, you um, I suggested I would make. Um, I don't know if what you're going to go go for doing this, but you have this uh, tree reverse, uh, this uh, transversal uh, handler, and then this is just you know through the eye. This is through the tree and the tree traversal handler. Well, if you send in the game object from the from object to the game object that you're going to hit, this is could be the two object. But I like the uh, I'm OCD about having the from and the game be the exact. Um, um, length but anyway this should be the uh, two object uh, that you're hitting and then so I take the tree object from the game object that I'm getting and the character geo and then I, I test some some stuff like hey I you know if that's not null and that's not null on the uh, this is the chops needed to how many chops are needed then it says I hit a tree and then I, I, I dump in the message uh, pump as I'm calling it uh, on some of your things, so it's. I think that's a really cool. It uh, it adds a lot of. Um, I think the mob traversal. Um, yeah, the mob traversal is kind of the same way. Where it it's just really nice to be able to say. Um, uh, that you know you're attacking. Let's see. Do I have a? I thought there was a. Oh yeah, I just put the mob, because I'm eventually. It, it, uh, on, I think on the tree. Let's see. Just sorry, I'm getting distracted here. On the tree, I believe I have, yeah, I have both, because you really kind of need to know. Um, yes, yeah, so you set up this uh, through the chop tree, um, and you kind of need to know both because when you're interacting with objects like that, it's really nice to just be able to say. I think. Um, let's see. If, um, under the tree manager, yeah, the tree manager is kind of what handles that message. Uh, it's kind of one way I sort of figured out but anyway so that interacts through the uh, message character uh, so it has the message tree and then it calls the interact and then saying well what are you interacting with 
you're interacting with the message character so stuff like that and then I just have this achievements if we're trigger uh, anyways that's kind of uh, one of the side point but uh, so it's just I've been working on this for a very long time so the second part is the dungeon generation I've uh, I talked about quite a bit and now I'm making a video so I'm just crazy uh, big fan I guess but anyway so um, you had this really cool idea about rooms and you I, I, I kind of jumped the gun and talked about a lot of things that could happen and you know some suggestions um, it's nothing against you I mean you're a, probably a thousand times better programmer than I'm I am just like you know I'm just persistent and have unlimited time but anyway so we have these uh, room zero or I guess it's called room zero which is the block room room one has the south and then two and then three and then you have these different variants so in the game here um, I guess I could oh, I guess the force system will go out of control um, so in the game here under this we have these um, this is our dungeon prefabs uh, I created these um, dungeon prefabs which uh, are so here's room zero uh, is just the, the closed room uh, room one for me is an open room um, I, I felt that was really important because when you when I generate a dungeon I, I want to put the character smack dab in the middle of the dungeon and then they can go all four ways uh, it's just one of the one of the, the t uh, there's about three tutorials I was uh, 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 um, three maze generation youtubers tutorials I guess you know it's not everybody has to use tutorials but they this is they actually use pictures and images and all sorts of things but mine's totally 3d so I that's kind of what I was talking about is this um, actually went a 9 by 9 uh, not just for Dyerwood 20 but because um, there's a 4 here a 4 here and a 1 split I mean it's, Minecraft is a square world but the problem becomes on your your, your chunks are square you know that 8 by 8 chunks but then which kind of reminds me I'm doing oh, 0 to 8 hopefully anyways um, these are chunks um, and but so they're 99 and then you have the center um, the center block which is right here in the, the center of this anyway so we have these um, these rooms uh, this is kind of a I've been working on this for three or four weeks now um, I've gone through all the videos and um, oh, what do you not oh yeah so I, I this is kind of how I did it I had these layers uh, that's because I can do now a layer and now I can have layer one this is kind of a future advance for me um, and then you can have a two so now they're too high this is why that's built like that but anyway so the dungeon room one is closed um, and then we have this one um, zero one um, three and four now um, for me I wanted to have a a loop here and a um, oops what's the four system Oh, it's part of the okay anyway so I wanted to have these uh, so here's um, the northeast exit and uh, so I take these uh, dungeon uh, templates and I stuff them into a dungeon factory um, right here uh, which is part of this uh, so here you can see these are all the prefabs of the dungeons now oh they're turned off because uh, they're turned off so here's the uh, dungeon uh, prefab zero um, the one is the empty room uh, now this is kind of really cool this is I've been working on this for quite a while but uh, I finally think I come up with this so there's the prefab one and then I rotate it and the exits are set up correctly and then it's rotated again and then rotated again and then you see here's the uh, the north south which uh, rotates only once and then the, here's the final room which is the um, it has three rotations and the cool thing about this is if you take this room uh, you can stuff this room and let's see yeah this one um, and it makes a really cool um, these all line up if you do it correctly but that's why you do it in code and not uh, anyway so then um, let's see the and then I just I shut off the factory um, there's probably an easier That's not what I wanted to do. I want to shut off the factory. Uh, and then what I do uh, is kind of what the final cool thing about this uh, demo is that I have, well, for me, 
I'll probably go through. So we, we create these. Um, is it going to do it automatically? So we uh, here again, we create this uh, this room. I think it's paused, and that's why it's not running. But it's it's now it's uh, doing a recursive function. Yes, yeah, so we start this uh, starting room zero. Uh, you can see kind of my little tiny world there. Um, this is kind of meant to be the under, up overworld, and then there's an underworld. But so then, so then the, this says, "Hey, I have an I have a north south, uh, which is kind of based on a dictionary, and it says there's my north to south exit, there's my um, east west. All it really cares about is that this exit is exiting to the east." But it wants an, a room that will go west. It doesn't care that if if it's it could be another it could be another room like this that could fit here. That's kind of part of the plan. Anyways, and then from here we get to this um, this uh, this this is called um, I guess this is called the north room from the south exit. Um, that's kind of how this is, and this is the east room from the west exit. Anyway, so if I let this go, oh, I need to be over here. It uh, just basically uh, uh, recurses out, um, and then it has a limit of I think five. Uh, okay, this is actually uh, this is one of the f oh, and there's a bug that shouldn't do that. Um, but yeah, this room. But anyways, it it generally um, should create a decent. Um, I think yeah, here's another room that's that's. Um, yeah, this room right there shouldn't be there. Yeah, I'm not sure where these. Um, this is kind of why this there's a lot of debug information here to try to tell me what's going on. But yeah, so it just basically um, creates this um, center room. Uh, this is kind of uh, uh, I guess I can mention it. And for it's my video. It's a uh, Blackthorn prod, I believe, is one. And then there's a couple a couple other people that had some really. He just had pixels. Um, is kind of what you're doing and then but anyways um well i mean you're doing um i don't have the 2017 so i can't use the map templates uh anyways i wanted to kind of talk about the code a little bit but if i can actually one second so we have this um this uh this dungeon room it has an exit which is this one right here i was kind of find, try, was trying to find a way to that's why i put a collider well, I put a collider on this level. Yeah, hoping that I could actually yeah, see that. But anyway, so so we have an exit of north, south, e uh, north, east, south, and west. If so these are all sort of, and then it has a depth of zero because that's uh, that's for the um, the recursion. Uh, yeah, so recursive. Yeah, recursive. Uh, and then it's not a template. Uh, that just means that it's a like a prefab. Um, Prefab might be a better word, but template's kind of the starting. It starts out as a template, then goes into a prefab of the 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 various rotations, and then from those rotations, it dumps it into a prefab con factory, which is what this this scene is telling you is telling me right here is that there's these are the prefabs we created from all those different um, template from the just those five templates just by rotating them. Uh, anyways, and then so we need the the data. So here, like here's a great example. This is has a south exit and a west exit, and then it, it generated a south uh, dungeon, uh, a south dungeon through the starting room, and then the four west east west combo, which should be this room right here, which is great. Um, oh, there's actually one really cool thing. I don't know. It's just really fun. Uh, if you look at here, you can say uh, this is not rotatable, but if it was then we should say it's only rotatable 90 degrees. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's um, that's for cases like uh, the 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 splits. Um, you know, the where the ones I think I think this room, yeah, right here is a split like that. Uh, this room right here, it can't if you rotate it 90 degrees, it's good. Or let's see. Yeah, it can only be rotated 90, only rotated once. So if you rotate it 90 degrees, you're good. But if you rotate it on 180 degrees, you're basically exactly where you're at because these are square nine by nines. And then if you rotate that again, you're you're doing the exact, you know, you're just basically taking this rotation. So it can only rotate once. Uh, and that's, um, 
that's part of this uh, let's see oop, these are all I had this all worked out this is part of this hide attribute which is kind of from Sebastian so it just says hide attribute on the rotate anyway so here's uh, the data we have the uh, just these are bulls we set this up in the, the template and then we need to know this is a special case for the all exits uh, which we use in the factory I believe yeah the factory because we need to know that we don't want to add this to the um, if we if we didn't have this we would add it to the um, the room templates uh, the room prefabs and we don't want to do that anyway so it just has the room ID which is the static is kind of how I do it then it's got the depth for the recursion and then here's the four possible exits uh, and then here's the rotatable and then the template and it has the offset of uh, it's 11 um, it's 9 um, which is an 11 offset anyway so we reset this uh, this is kind of really important for the rotation which here's the rotation so we pull the the bulls out of it and then we reset it and then we has you know if it has north so we we pull all the data out then reset the data which is kind of this was kind of causing a bug it would set the um, north to be let's see where was this so it set the north here the false and then come down here and and it would just was causing problems yeah yeah because it the exit north is now being checked um, I can't remember it anyways it was causing problems because it you know, when you're I oh yeah yeah I see I'm 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 rotating the object and then it it sets that you know this to the you know it needs to be reset to back to the the false um, by, through here instead of through each individual one because if it has a um, let's see here I can't think of a great example but like yeah I guess um, anyways it this is kind of was causing a problem because when you rotate it it needed to know that it could have the, the 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 standardized data basically and then when it reset this uh, reset this itself individually it would screw up the entire piece uh, anyway so that's that's all we do for a rotation um, and then we um, uh, this is our generation but in our so our factory is kind of the I guess I should have started with the factory but anyway so we this is the clockwise rotation uh, this is the clock representation of news. This is north, east, west, south. That's kind of as a kid, I remember it that way. But it's actually north. You think of clockwise as north, then east, then south, then west. So that's kind of how I, you know, this is kind of my, um, I don't know, blueprint, I guess, of how I'm designing this system. So then I have this um, dungeon north code, which just is all the enums of the dungeon. Um, I think oh yeah so that's just used pretty much primarily for the dictionary so we have these prefabs um, these templates that I fill in manually and then I have the so this these are the templates which are part of the the templates the templates go into the prefabs I think these are the templates go into the yeah so these are the the singular ones that go into the templates and then go finally into the um, um, I want to say these are the, the prefabs but I'm not sure if that's the case uh, but we also need a dictionary to know which if so we need to, this is it's dungeon north but it's dungeon direction or something uh, it just basically means that that there's the north direction uh, if it this uh, actually I was confusing this for a little bit but it's rooms by exit yeah so it's like if this has a north uh, if this would be north it means that this this room has an exit and we do this later uh, so we anyways we uh, set up the prefabs this is kind of how I do the um, I guess this could be a static as well but this is kind of how I do the I set up a prefabs transform and then I, I set it to this transform and then I just um, I, I set up all the, the the data or the uh, the dictionaries or set up the dictionary through the I could do a for each on this but uh, this is kind of the one of the quickest way to do it I just I have a list of dungeon rooms which I'm gonna randomize in a minute um, and then I just have dungeon templates uh, which I'm now going through my dungeon templates and I'm checking if it's rotatable um, great and then uh, if it's not rotatable I think we just um, 
probably be easier if you do that. I just add it to the template because if you can't rotate the room, then you, there's no point to rotate the, which is kind of why that hide attribute. Anyway, so then if it's only rotated 90, we uh, create the instance of from, we take the prefab, create the instance, and add it to the templates. So these are like the uh, templates. These become the, um, the prefabs. Yeah, I guess these are the prefabs. Anyways, it's just probably should probably name them better. Anyway, so we rotate, we create another instance. See, this is the the original rotation one that we're creating a copy of it, and then this one's the one where we take the copy, the same copy, because we need to rotate it only by 90, and then we rotate it by 90 degrees uh, through the tra through this transform, and then which I should, probably could do it in all into here, but maybe anyway so then we rotate the right through that um, all we're trying to do is get the directions like if we're this is kind of saying if we're at north then we want to rotate 90 degrees to the right or clockwise so we need now to have the exit that was in the north to be exit to the east and that allows me to um, to uh, create these uh, templates uh, these only six templates which I'm probably gonna have to do a bunch more because I want to do a bunch more room types and stuff like that anyways uh, this is the really cool part it took me a long time to figure this out but we have four rooms to rotate so we set rotate to three and then we create this uh, for, so we have four rooms we want to rotate because and if there's if it's uh, I might have to add more code to this but if it's rotatable and it's only not so this means uh, it has uh, it, it can be rotated four times so every 90 degrees each direction so then we, we, we take the rotate, uh, we set it to three because it's one less uh, through here, um, which, because we want to rotate, we want to, I, I can't remember exactly how this works, but uh, we take the instance of the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like this is the T and then we're saying, so the this, t this sets the rotation to the first rotation. So we only wanted to rotate it once. So it's like three, yeah, so this is right. We need to rotate the room from three, which is what this is two. Then we minus it by one, comes two, rotate this twice. Um, yeah, and then we, so the, the T is lowering to one. You could probably have done this differently, but this is kind of how I did it. So basically we need to rotate this one object three times, two times, or one time, or not at all to get the proper, um, template that we're looking for and then once we do that we just add this to the room templates um, and then once we've got those room templates we need to set them all active to true uh, this is only so I can display it because when I um, instantiate the object I set it to false this is a problem I've noticed when you're creating prefabs through prefabs it's uh, it uh, it puts it into the scene and it's active so I need to deactivate that object and then every time I instantiate a copy of that object um, yeah let's see yeah the grant get random room has to set the uh, um, this is static based on that direction so it's asking for a random room anyway so uh, long story short um, uh, yes yeah, so we're setting them all active just so I can see it in the inspector I could turn this off uh, so I wouldn't see it um, which is probably what I'll do for I don't know I'm gonna have to figure out how to do this in production or you know get this this can't you know I could run a factory and run the all this generation as each room starts but um, maybe it's only once anyways um, I need to set the position to uh, this is just setting the templates in that order uh, so it's just you know all the all the prefabs basically I probably really should name this prefab room prefabs is what this now becomes um, and it's just setting all their positions so just laying them out in a line so I can see them and then so here's the all exits this is the special case where we don't we just want to add in the um, the rooms by exit so then we just say if this and we don't do an else if here because you know I mean you're probably quite well aware of this but it, since we're exiting north it can also have like it could have all four so we're checking all four or it could have all three or two or whatever so uh, oh, I guess that's one thing, the room I forgot was the three exit room. Anyways, not a big deal. I'm sure I'll get it all there eventually. And Mitch, that doesn't have four. I don't know. It's, um, maybe not. <laughs> that's probably why. Anyway, so uh, 
So we're just adding the, this dictionary to the north, uh, east, uh, south, and west. I just do this uh, specifically in order. So it's like I, I make sure that everything lines up and it just helps me. Um, and then I, um, oh, and then after this, I set the prefabs to false so I, I don't have to see it. And then this is where I generate. Um, this is that design template of one. I started at zero and then that's the uh, blank room. So anyways, or the no exit room. So one is the uh, all exit room for me. And then uh, then we set the, um, oh yeah, then we set this game object to false and we also set the prefabs to false. Uh, the create instance just uh, creates a, takes the prefab and gets, uh, it could also technically create another prefab. Uh, this creates, a, takes the prefab, the dungeon room, template prefab and then creates another prefab and stores that prefab um, which is crazy uh, and this is kind of where we actually get the uh, we get the random room so we we're instantiating the prefabs here um, through the rooms by exit which are kind of rooms by exit which are prefabs um, all the rooms that are you know all the rooms with north are prefabs I can't remember how it works anyways uh, we're just instantiating another copy of that, and then we're we're sending the parent to the. Uh, this is kind of the dungeon, dungeon zero parent. We're setting the position to zero, uh, setting it active because it's deactivated, and this is kind of that room ID is negative one. Now it's one plus one, and then we set the uh, the name, uh, and then we set the uh, is template to false. I believe we set is template to. Oh, this is just a check. If it's a template, we only do that once right here uh, in the dungeon generator. Oh, because we don't want a random room. We know which prefab we want. So this is the special case here where we're um, right here. This special special case where we know which prefab we want. So we're asking for it. Uh, anyways, uh, and then we need to right here. We have this opposite tag when we're creating a room from the east. We want to know the east to the west opposite tag. So it's just a simple function to do that. Uh, the dungeon room generator uh, is actually quite simple. Uh, yeah, oh, this well, it's probably the, the, it's kind of quite simple, but it's the, uh, it's the precursor. So we just set up the instance uh, just so we can access it outside. We have this dungeon transform. We access it outside. This is the depth cutoff. So that means like how many deep the recursion is so it's like it starts at zero and then it generates the four rooms at one and then those rooms uh, they'll generate their own rooms at two and so on and so forth um, if you set this lower um, you know so if you set it lower you'll probably not get as many rooms or you can even set this to zero and only generate the one room anyways uh, we just create this uh, data uh, we have this on enabled this is just so I can sort of turn it off and on um, in code like I was doing and then um, okay so this is the uh, inactive is just so I can turn this entire thing off um, anyway so it takes the ge the generating room that we got which is the starting room which is what we name it we give it the depth zero uh, the depth is really important because we use the depth later uh, we set the template we I think we're getting the template I think is why we set it the, anyways we ensure it's false uh, we turn it off as well because we don't want it to see. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, anyways, the start build is through the um, through the on enable. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we do it on enable, which is where it kicks it off, and then we just add the range of the new rooms. Um. Which this should actually check. There's a if this is null, then this can't add it to there. Anyway, so, um, so we we take the new rooms and add it to the rooms. These are the actual dungeon, the physical dungeon rooms, and these are our our generated rooms. And that's all part of this build dungeon. I think. Yeah, I'm not. This should actually um, check if new rooms. Anyways, uh, that could be a bug. I'm not sure why it didn't crash. Um, because it comes in the first time, uh, new rooms is null. Yeah, I don't think I add it through here. So, anyways, uh, so we're just clearing. Uh, we add the old data to this um, set list of data that the the total rooms that we've uh, generated. 
uh, and then we start this coroutine, which is kind of where it, it slowly, uh, this is the recursive uh, here. Uh, it just basically checks every single room uh, and then uh, creates this rooms to add through the generate. This uh, returns a list of basically of four rooms, but uh, I like lists better than arrays. Uh, anyways, if this is not equal to null, this is where it aired out before. If there's no rooms to generate, it doesn't add it to it, and then it waits a tick uh, for the uh, the rec for this to parse through. If it gets through and it says, "Hey, I've got more rooms to generate," um, it's requesting more rooms. So then we say start build, uh, which is kind of that it. it I was uh, before I was doing a start coroutine. Uh, oops, start. Okay, come on. Start. Honest, I can type. Uh, which I wasn't sure if I could, uh, the same coroutine. Which I wasn't sure if I could actually do this. Uh, but then I also realized uh, the other problem with this is the start build. It takes this um, this room data. Because this, this takes all these rooms. Uh, it has this sort of new, this is new rooms to build. Or pending rooms or something. Might be a better word. Ending rooms, uh, which are rooms that are not um, added to the, because I c basically just it's just kind of sort of there because I can't take these rooms and add rooms to add add range because I'm modifying the array, so I need this array to sort of say hey, these are the more rooms I need to add, and it just keeps so it checks every single room, uh, it does check uh, every single room and you know and. It, um, but this is kind of a just a real quick. I'll show you that next. But yeah. Anyways, I guess that's where we're at right now. So this just generates the four rooms. Uh, if it's a template, this is kind of uh, no longer necessary. But because this used to be an update and all sorts of crazy things. But now we just got this great little generate function. If the template, uh, we don't need to. Ret we just return null because you know we check for that. Um, you know, some people, uh, you know, I don't know, I guess it's kind of a, not a comment towards uh, Mr. Kudus. He's quite familiar with this, but some people are, like, concerned about, like, oh, my God, this, you know, this function's returning null, then you have to handle that null. Well, this, this, if this, this if, if, if it doesn't have any data, um, which, you know, I'm kind of handling it uh, through the generator, you know, right here, then I'm not. I don't need to add any range to it. But it, if it's like, you know, I can't. I could say like new, you know, whatever, and then check the, if the count. But this just is really nice just to check, you know, all sorts of things. Like, you know, it could be a, a node. It could be anything. A note, you know. Anyway, so uh, it's just a really handy way to say, hey, um, a bailout early, um, you know. And this, you know, this could be a generate room. Um, I don't know, nullable or something. Anyways, uh, so we we got this. Uh, we've checked our making sure uh, this depth cutoff is sort of that depth. Uh, this is the uh, this I believe this is a just a single. Um, yeah, it's not a static, so it's just part of each room has their own depth limit, their own depth, which is probably this is what this is doing. So we uh, we copy the data out of here. We could do it through this dot depth, but it seems like that doesn't work for me a lot of times. Um, if I add this like this dot depth here, uh, which is it seems like a valid code, but it it doesn't seem to. Uh, it seems to be like it's copying data, you know, because uh, C sharp and Unity is very um, very passing things by references. So, so this should not. It, it shouldn't take the depth of here and add one to it and then set it back to itself or to this this copy of it. Anyway, so basically we're checking um, if the exit north, uh, so if we have an exit north and our north is null, then we need to create one. So it's just basically a kind of a, you know, and then, um, yeah, so it's just basically kind of saying, hey, if you have an exit north, but you don't have a, a spot filled for it, go generate a spot, uh, which is, um, and that's only if our depth is is not too. F so we get to the ed end of a four depth, and we don't want to go any farther. We stop even if there's three rooms uh, out in outer space. That's part of the problem with this, but uh, there's different ways to handle that. Anyway, so we're just uh, setting up this. Uh, we need to. 
that this returns the north and what we're trying to do is set the exit of the south and we're sending and so we're sort of setting this um, yeah this dungeon north uh, which is, is this fields north to this param which is this field so this dungeons north um, this you know each each of these rooms has these uh, four exit points um, I guess you could well, I don't know. I was thinking you could sometimes you have like, and I was thinking you sometimes you have like, oh, if this is not not if this is not null, then you have an exit north. But that's uh, we're sort of generating that based on the exit data. Uh, anyways, bidding on the exit room. Uh, the other thing we do we do a debug check here. If the if it has an exit if it doesn't have an exit south, um, we could set the date up anyways, but then we just say hey something's wrong we we screwed up De dungeon exit doesn't match return value great great debug statement anyways we just do the exact same three and four times um, again we're not checking the else because we need to check all four directions uh, yeah and then we just um, oh I forgot the recursion so the depth is the the de well, I guess yeah, I don't know. feels better so we're, we pull the depth from our depth. So if our depth is starting depth is zero, then we just say the depth zero plus one is all the, the four rooms around the starting room is one. And then those three or those three rooms basically are two. And then those, uh, well, let's see, I, it goes up from there, right? So the, the four rooms around you has three rooms each. So that's 12 and they're all set at depth two-ish I think and then the 64 rooms possible which is never going to happen because of how we're setting this up but the 64 rooms have a depth of three so it could go crazy but we have limits on that we're not using all exits we could have a rare chance to use all exits and stuff like that we might add that in later anyway so this just sets our depth um, and then it so this sets the depth here so this is like if this is 10 or 11 then we come back through and when on our recursion on our build rooms again and if we set then we check our internal depth right here that we're setting into here and say oh we're too we're too far we need to stop because you know this could go forever i mean if uh and and maybe in a i mean uh, i maybe if i i fixed a few bugs or optimized this a little bit or i can have this run but it basically slows down and starts going crazy. Um, maybe with the, well, no, even all the data. I mean, I'm throwing out so much data. It's always been my joy about, um, oh, we're in the generator. It's always been my joy about Unity. People are like, you know, you can't put in 10,000 nodes. And I'm like, oh, yeah, let's try. Uh, anyways, so that's pretty much it. That's like, what, 30 minutes? Yeah, 40 minutes. Woo! It's almost a uh, kudos worthy. Anyway, so I think it's really cool. Um, I, I really like the rotation and the templates. Um, the templates, uh, I might try to scriptify and, oh, yeah, see, it's kind of, I think the, the this four system, by the way, is from, it started with a Quill 18 system, which is kind of really not working, but you have, um, yeah, and, and they're not actually respecting tiles, but they have, um, uh, you have basically, and it's also kind of a Quillinox, which is kind of on my gaming channel, but you have um, these, which ghosts and slimes are predators, and these are these are actually critters or pets. That's why you could pet them. Uh, and then the sheep also. Uh, I don't know if I can find a sheep. They're Jane, this is a m sheep. Yeah, I'm dropping all the names. Uh, anyway, so there's a Jane m sheep, so pretty cool and these are just level one free monsters and this is the of course the free character pack and but yeah i mean it's just like you know you could sort of uh, imagine the 2d aspect of the game that you're working on just like that uh, besides this bug right here and this i think this one was right here but you know i'm not sure it's kind of where the next i need to test some of these wall connections Oh, yeah, that's an east-west wall. You know, so somehow there's they're generating walls that shouldn't be there, um, and it's kind of hard to you know. But anyways, this is kind of a uh, the outer edge is closed. So that's kind of the more important. I think that actually calls um, 
See on the console? I think that call. Oh wow, that's a lot of nulls. Yeah, so it finished. Oh, it finished. Huh. No, that could be why. You know, it's probably that exactly what I was talking about. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Okay. I need to fix that bug. I need to say if pending rooms dot count greater than zero, because you can't add a null reference to it, uh, even though. Uh, we're trying to we're moving this data into here and then we're building the code um and the only do that if the oh no yeah okay so you only do that if this is true yeah which you start oh you don't start build yeah so you the penny rooms sorry getting to be real code house now Starting to do uh, live testing. Anyways, uh, so uh, there's there's obviously something a little bit wonky here, but this just it is just sort of hey. Um, oh, you know what? Oh, you know what I should do? Is I should say pending rooms. Dot add dungeon room. There we go. That would fix uh, if this r this runs without this. It needs to know hey. Um, these are this is a pending room because it's not part of the and um, then I can actually remove it from the room system There we go. Yeah, now we're getting cool. Oh, and then this is part of this Yeah, so this uh, adds it to the pending rooms and then then it's it's like hey you have a room pending and then you can actually look at the pending rooms uh, Somehow yeah here you can look at the pending rooms in the inspector and see how many rooms it needs to build and then this is actually um I'm not sure how I could test, but I could probably say, hey, there's 300 rooms to generate or something uh, through just sort of guessing. But anyway, so that's that's that. Um, anyway, so there's uh, there's Blackthorn Prod had a, uh, he's a little <laughs> punk kid, I call him, but <laughs> I'm sure he's a, he's a man. But uh, he has a, a really awesome 2D tutorial on creating, he did uh, rooms, and then he had... Um, uh, just, uh, so, yeah, so that's kind of where I took quite a bit of this from some he was doing. There's a couple other people that had some, um, more in this, uh, this is actually, this recursion is actually kind of, uh, my own sort of design. I, it's, I, uh, I think some people probably did something similar, but anyways, um, you know, plus I was messing with this with another, trying to get, anyway, so... So maybe if you uh, if you uh, comment and say hey you don't mind I know I, I just don't like to step on YouTubers' toes because they're sort of trying to do this for, you know I'm not sure what some people some people are trying to do it for a living I'm just doing it for fun but and it seems like you and a few other people are really nice about it but um, I don't know I'm just trying to anyways I should stop talking because I will talk forever but yeah so I I don't know I I, I you know I'm I, I should say also, I'm kind of sharing this just because it's really cool, and I really hope you do something completely different and and continue what you're doing. You probably maybe even already pre-recorded video too. It's totally awesome. It's it helps me learn. Uh, it just really motivates me. Um, you know, I've been you know going through a couple I don't know a year now, maybe six months, nine months. I even thought about going back through some of the old old content, um, but I'm quite quite busy right again getting quite busy again trying to uh focus on you know the five games that i'm working on but you know <laughs> don't let my company know that anyway so i'm in micaiah thanks very much kudos and anybody else that wants to check this out this is going to be up on my programming channel which my whopping four subscribers but it's just there for you know showcasing and kind of really helps me talk through some of this as well which is a big help so anyways thanks everyone and especially to cool hosts and keep up the great work and uh, you know i can't i can't stress enough i'm really excited to whatever you do even if it's nothing like this um it's like you know your message pump is really amazing i mean like the tree transversal and and all these are just um um you can kind of see it through all these um these all right here are all based on uh, the traversal so I've ha and then um, which all through the world handlers 
yeah well I guess those are and then you can also these are all through the systems but then um, yeah well, you, that's all your code but then I think it oh yeah the NPC right here has also um, all the NPC code is through the uh, message talk handler um, oh and I don't do the oh sorry yeah oh yeah yeah see I do the same thing where I just say hey show me what you know uh, get uh, I think this is actually part of the uh, base I, I changed the base class yeah so I changed the base class of all these which is probably what I was suggesting anyways I gotta stop or I will talk forever but yeah it's just you know that's all every single code pretty much in this project has been sort of taken what you've done and running with it and sort of thinking about it some of the uh, the achievements all this is probably um uh, board to bits he has uh, achievements you know it's not his code per se because I've you know dumped in a ton of qu uh, quality teens but anyways I'm talking forever I'll stop thank you very much I really appreciate it. keep up the awesome work even if you're doing something completely different I will be so excited and can't wait for the next one